you get a prophetic word for somebody, you don't have to wait till they're around. You just got to give it. Send it. All right. Let's get a microphone. Yeah, you sat there long enough, hold, and you won't get by with it. <laughs> when we were sending forth the sound tonight, I heard the sound of a, of a great spinning, a tornado. And that's all I can describe it as, as a huge tornado. And it was spinning and spinning and spinning. And it was so loud. And it was, I know that here, the doctors, for some cancer patients, they take their blood and they spin it to remove impurities. And then they give mm. them back to them. And I felt like that's what the Lord was doing for Ray tonight. He was removing his blood and it was spinning and spinning. And it was such, it was... His body has been attacked by such a, a violent, uh, radical cancer that the Lord, it was almost like it was violently spinning faster and faster, and the Lord was mingling with his blood when he was putting it back into Ray. And upon this earth, there's never been anything more sacred and more pure and more holy than Jesus' blood poured out upon this earth. And it was being mingled with Ray's blood, and he is healed. I declare that Ray Hughes is healed by the blood of Christ. Yes. Amen. Yeah, I saw that on Thursday about the sound, a sound that Ray would capture that would bring healing into his body. And I was trying to get in, you know, deeper into that and didn't quite make the journey all the way in. But then tonight I went again and then that's what came of this. That's the first time I've ever sent a sound somewhere. I've sent his word to heal a lot of times, and I've sent text messages to, I actually sent a text message in prayer in the meeting Thursday night in prayer. I sent a text message to a prophet in Oklahoma and who's fighting diabetes and cancer and lesions on his liver and, I mean, a host of stuff, and it was like really encouraged. It was just a right on word, and so I've learned when you hear things, you need to act on things. Don't set in... If you try to second guess, you'll miss your opportunities. You know, you'll just completely miss the moments and then you'll kick yourself later. I learned that as a real young prophet. I had a word for R.W. Schambach. And because it was R.W. Schambach, I didn't, give, I didn't connect with him in the word because it's like I'm just a peon. He's not going to hear me. And literally... Everything in the word came to pass in his life. He had a heart attack. I mean, everything came. And I had a word, if he would do this and this, he could avoid these things. And I saw that unfold in front of me. And so after that, I never held back. I had a word for Mike Bickle. I called and gave him that word. I don't hold back words anymore because it's somebody, you know. So you need to release words when they come and just allow them to to go where they need to go and don't worry about it. Well, last week we talked about thresholds. That's what we talked about. So I'm going to do thresholds part two. I have another, an extension of last week. So if some of you weren't here last week, to hear it you'll have to get on Facebook archives, otherwise you won't hear it. If you get on the YouTube, my YouTube channel, you'll hear it there. So. Those are the two places, but I'll just do a little review to catch everybody up and to help everybody that was here, because the reality of it is everybody here didn't probably hear it. <laughs> you know, it's like sometimes you need a refresher. So I'm going to give you a, just a quick refresher of last week. And probably many of you are dealing with thresholds. Kathy talked about going through thresholds. Probably some of us this week are more aware of a threshold that's setting in front of us. And a threshold is really a, a, a changing moment of time. I mean, it's really a moment where, like, you're stepping into something new. And I said last week that we are, we are literally in a threshold moment for a move of God to come to America. We are very much on the threshold of it. Uh, whether it's a year or five years, I'm hearing five years from some people. I'm hearing a year or two. We, but we're, I'll tell you, when it, it'll happen when we finally clean up the church. Yeah. We finally get rid of all the, all the goofiness and 
wrong focuses and all of that, then you'll see God come with such an outpouring that you will, I mean, you'll just be amazed at what will happen. And that's what I believe is really coming. I believe a move of God is coming, we're in a, and we're in a threshold. We're going to have to cross some thresholds to get there, individually and corporately. I think the church is in a corporate threshold right now, and we don't even realize the threshold we're in is sacred. Because all thresholds are sacred. And so if you're going through a, a threshold, you came through the threshold of the doors tonight, you crossed the sacred boundary, you came into a sacred place, and all thresholds have tension points. Tension points are creating greater faith. So we already see that. I see a change of our faith level from last week already. In the room, it was different. It was like we believe God tonight. So what happened is we stepped through a threshold this week, and we came into, into that tension. It put tension on our faith. Our faith had to react. And also thresholds bring pressure points. And so maybe you haven't felt pressure points yet, but they're going to they're gonna come because pressure points is the only place that your character gets developed. So you've got to have pressure points for your character. You've got to have tension points for your faith. And we are really in a, we are really in a threshold for this move of God that's coming. And so what God is doing in it, you know, all of it came out of last week, came out of Ezekiel, Ezekiel 10. God is marking us. Maybe it's Ezekiel 9. He's marking us. And, the, and so when they marked him, the guy had the ink horn, remember, and he went around and he marked those. The marking was the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which was a letter that stood for truth. So we're being marked. God is marking those that are standing for truth in this hour. So, you know, it's kind of like, that which is half truth is not getting marked. That which is really carrying truth is getting marked. Who's carrying truth in this hour? That's what's being marked. And so Ezekiel 10, we come to decision points. Thresholds are decision points. And so we all have to make a decision if you're going to go through a threshold or not. And sometimes we go through, sometimes we don't. I'm going to talk tonight about why we are not going through certain thresholds. But we have their decision points and thresholds set out new boundaries. So when you go through a threshold, you're going into a new boundary that you've not been into before. And so uh, crossing those thresholds is actually you're crossing into a new experience in God. You're crossing into a new greater glory of God or an understanding of God. And then we know that that man had the ink horn and he went in and he was told in Ezekiel 10, he said, take the fire from between the wheels and scatter it to the earth. And so thresholds are representative of promotions. So he was promoted. He went from being a scribe to being one that would carry the fire from heaven into the earth. And I believe that God, that, so that tells me that when you come through a threshold, even tonight, you all came through the threshold, you have to let go of what you carried in here to grab hold of what you need to carry out of here. So if you don't let go of it, you carry the same thing out again, and you never get a promotion. You never keep moving into the next place. So the man with the ink horn had to put his ink horn down to grab the fire. He couldn't carry the ink horn and the fire out. He got a promotion from being a scribe to being a messenger. And so I know we got scribes in here tonight, Judy. Yes, I know sir. there's people that scribe everything and all that, but the, I know. <laughs> so... What is God wanting to put in your hands is what happens when you go through a threshold. You should be asking the question, if I went through a threshold, what does God want to put in my hand? What is he requiring of me to let go? But what is he requiring of me, just like tonight, if you came in with sickness, you need to let go of your sickness and go out with healing. You see, if you are coming in with depression, you need to let go of that and go out with faith. So thresholds are sacred places, and in the... Old Testament, you can actually see, I said it last week, and did a little more studying, that they always had two or three people guarding the threshold. There were always priests assigned to guard the threshold of the temple. And David and, and uh, Samuel actually appointed, I believe it was over 200, 200 designated people to guard the threshold that, of the temple, of what they were going to build. And they started guarding the tabernacle that David built as a preliminary to what they were going to do building the temple. And so not only did he appoint 200, you know, 24 teams 
of, was it 24 teams of 12 to do worship and lead worship. He appointed guardians of the threshold to keep, the sac keep that which was sacred, sacred. This hence is one of the things that we've not done as the church. We don't safeguard coming in here. We don't look at this as sacred. We just look at it. We've looked at it more as entertainment. You know, and even the Holy Spirit to entertain me. Where this is a sacred place, a sacred moment, a sacred time. God wants to do something sacred. Just like tonight, sending that sound array was a sacred moment. We stepped into a threshold inside of this place and stepped into something to send something to him. A very sacred moment. I mean, even thinking about it, it's like, I mean, it's like a high honor in God that God would even allow us to do that. You see? So don't take these things lightly. And because what happens in these thresholds, thresholds are places where God's glory dwells. And when we read it last week and looked at it in Ezekiel, we saw that the threshold, the glory of God, moved from the mercy seat to the threshold. It actually became, became the guardian of the threshold. So when those priests were appointed to guard the threshold, they were once carrying God's glory. And so when you start looking at all of this, it really starts to mean a whole lot more for us than just, isn't that a cute thing that we have a threshold and we cross the threshold and on and on. So, starting tonight, so there's my review, so isn't that just a little ditty? You know, so thresholds, you like ditty? The ditty thing? Oh, ditty. All thresholds have one thing in common. That a greater degree of heaven would be felt and seen. In other words, every threshold is designed to create an open heaven. So I'm going to talk a little bit about open heaven tonight. Because when you start crossing thresholds, that threshold exists for, to increase your faith. Because it's going to take faith to cross over into that threshold, into a place that you've never been. I guarantee your faith was stretched to release a sound and send it to Ray. It's easy for us to pray for Ray, and it's easy for us to decree to Ray, but it's a whole other game to say we're sending a sound to Ray. You see, that, that takes a greater level of faith or a greater place of faith, but when we step into a threshold, you could tell that faith rose in the room when we stepped into that moment. So it was like faith came alive when we stepped into the threshold. So thresholds are there to get your faith increased. And then thresholds are there for you to have greater hope. Because I bet some of you got some hope that if we sent a sound to Ray, someone could send a sound to me. Someone could send me a word. Somebody could be praying and there could be something in the spirit come at me that somebody has sent to me that I really need. So hope starts rising. Third thing is, it creates your destiny. And there's destiny setting in the room tonight for people. Cody, there's destiny setting on you. I look at you and all tonight I heard God just saying over and over, destiny, 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 destiny. I just hear that setting on you. And there's destiny setting on people in the room tonight, and that's because it's inside that threshold you find your destiny. You're not going to find your threshold setting around in the world. You're going to find your destiny setting in God, setting in the heart of God. God's going to give it. You get through the threshold. So really where you're going to find your destiny is when you cross the threshold into God's heart. That's when you start to find your destiny. Fourth thing is thresholds create opportunities. And they start bringing opportunities to us that we didn't have before. So like tonight we had, I mean, man, we had an opportunity. We had a privilege to send that sound array. That was an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Now you see, I know I'm the one that instigated it, but I stepped into that threshold Thursday night. I didn't step into that threshold tonight. I stepped into it Thursday night when we were praying, and I know there's a sound that God wanted to send, and I was praying about it tonight because I could sense a different sound in the atmosphere. So I'm like, okay, what are we supposed to do? And then I, was, I grabbed my phone. I was going to text Ray and say, Ray, there's a sound you're supposed to grab. And then the Lord says, no, why don't you just send it? Well, then that's challenging me to step through that threshold. Oh, yeah. Because you all have to kind of go with me because it was like a corporate deal. So it's like, are you all going to come with me or not? And you start to wrestle with why you don't go through thresholds. You see? But everything that God has built has a threshold. We talked about that last week. 
So here's a little reality. Your life has a threshold built in it by God to access Him. There is a place of discovery setting in your life where you discover God in the pathway that you walk, in the people you see every day, and how you do your study time or whatever you do. There is a place that you can cross over in God that He has built in your life to find Him. Some people never find it because of things we're going to cover tonight. Other people find it because they face those things. And so he's literally built it and designed it right into our lives. And probably the greatest dimension of that is in Revelation 4 and Revelation 2, 3. You see John the Revelator sees seven church ages. And what does he also see in those church ages? He sees failure. He sees they lost their first love. He sees that this is going on over here. He says they've allowed this. They, they've allowed false apostles and prophets. I mean, it's, it's like in those church ages, he sees something, but then he's given an invitation in Revelation 4 to go through an open door and see things that must be hereafter. And that open door that he went through was a threshold. And he went through that threshold, and we have the whole rest of the book of Revelation coming out of that moment if he had not went through the threshold, the book of Revelation would have ended at the end of chapter 3. And we would have ended with the church with problems instead of seeing eternity, seeing heaven, seeing a throne, seeing one seated upon a throne, seeing the authority of God, seeing the 24 elders, seeing the sounds and frequencies of heaven, seeing the worship, seeing all the things that John saw because he went through a threshold. Now when he went through that threshold, I think it probably increased his faith a little bit. I think it probably gave him some hope. I think it probably, he saw opportunities. I think he saw all those things I just talked about. And so what he really saw was he saw the intention of God to live in an open heaven. Because what God was saying is, here's an open atmosphere where there's no limitation, there's no restriction, there's no boundaries, you're not limited because you are sitting here with me in this open heaven area, this open heaven place. So when you have a crossing over of a threshold, you have a greater personal encounter with God's presence. And that's what John did when he crossed over and went through the open door, Revelation 4, and went in, he had an encounter with God's presence. First thing he sees is what? A throne. Then he sees one seated on a throne. God always starts with himself. Then he, then he says, and now around him is all these other things. You see, John didn't see the other things first. He saw the one that was seated on the throne. He saw a throne that wasn't empty. He saw a throne of authority. He saw all those things. So when a threshold comes and you step through it, you step into God's presence. And if we're sitting here saying a move of God is coming and it's going to be presence-driven, that means somebody's got to go through a threshold to get there. It isn't going to just come because we hope it comes, want it to come. You know, God is sovereign. He can come if he wants to come or not come. You know, but it's like, what are we doing to hasten the coming of the Lord? I mean, that's what the scripture says. Or are we setting or restricting the coming of the Lord by our actions? And I believe there's going to be a remnant within the remnant that will go through the threshold, hold the presence of God, bring that presence into the earth, and everybody's going to have to deal with it. You know, they're going to feel the effects of it. It's going to have an effect on humanity and culture and, and everything. So Isaiah 6, 4 through 5, it says, And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke, then said I, woe is me, I'm undone because I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Isaiah is crossing a threshold in Isaiah 6.4. And, and what's happening is it says the post of the door is moved. If you read Amos 9.1, it talks about that the voice of God is shaking those posts and the lintel falls and it literally shakes the threshold even. It shakes the foundation. And if Amos 9.1 is not a very encouraging section of scripture because it's talking about God bringing judgment. And he literally says, I'm going to kill everybody and I'm going to kill the ones that run away and I'm going to slay their heads and cut them off and I'm going to do this and that. 
All these things are going to happen. That's why I'm in Isaiah. It's a little more encouraging, you know. <laughs> but Isaiah, he's, he, he's undone. When you go through a threshold, you'll know because you're pretty much undone. You, you don't, you know. But what happened in Isaiah, here's what happened. His message changed. His assignment changed. His heart changed. His perception changed. His seeing changed. Everything changed because he went through that moment into God. Now imagine that when he started seeing these things, he had to make a decision like all of us do. You all have to make decisions when you start seeing things in God. Tonight you had to make a decision if you're going to raise your voice and release your sound. Whatever that sound was, you had to make a decision. And he had to make this choice. And he starts looking at himself and he says, I'm unclean. I have unclean lips. I dwell in a circumstance that's unclean. I dwell with people that are unclean. I got, I got a situation, God. But when he goes through that, God says, I'll take a coal from the fire from the altar, which is kind of like the inkhorn guy with the fire scattered to the earth. I'm going to touch your lips with it. I'm going to purify you, Isaiah. You're going to become the message and the message of fire from the altar into the earth. I'm going to scatter you into the earth. Think of how Isaiah has been scattered into the earth. As we read this, scattered everywhere into the earth. I'm going to scatter you into the earth. And all this is going to come because you came through this threshold and came out on the other side. Remember we talked about Jonah last week as a threshold. We talked about David. We talked about Moses. We talked about several of these guys. They all had threshold moments and they all had to make decisions to go through the threshold and come out the other side. And we see, you know what we always see? We always love what we see of them coming out of the threshold, but we never talk about going into the threshold. We never talk about what does that mean? What am I faced with that I'm, you know, so I'm going to talk about that tonight. How's that? So that's my second review. What stops us in crossing our thresholds? What stops us? Well, we're doing spiritual warfare, aren't we? We're battling. Newsflash. The devil has thresholds for you too. He has places he wants to get you to cross over. So he brings things into your life to try to allure you to his threshold that you would cross over that threshold and he would have ownership and put you in bondage. He has loneliness, despair, all kinds of things planned out trying to get your focus off of God's threshold and onto his threshold. And all of those things are going to try to bring you like well, I feel lonely. I feel like nobody cares. I feel like everybody rejects me. Woe is me. Woe is me. Woe is me. Yeah. Cross over the threshold into depression and be bound. Well, it, it's all right to smoke. It's all right to drink. It's all right to do this and that. It's all right. It's all right to smoke pot. Let me cross. Oh, I'm going to cross over the threshold into real addiction. And now I'm bound. So the devil has his own thresholds that he's trying to get you to. The, the, the place of pain, suffering, all kinds of things. They start out little, 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 little. I know a woman, you never asked her how she felt. Because the list grew every week. Every week, longer. You know, it was craziness. First it starts out, I got diabetes. Diabetes. Next thing you know, I've got diabetes, I've got this, I've got gallbladder, and I've stepped now over into the bondage of infirmity. And she died in that infirmity. She literally died of that infirmity. We had another gal, same thing. She was like, oh, better not be careful here. <laughs> yeah, I'm very little careful. But, but she was convinced that she would get Alzheimer's. Because her mom got Alzheimer's. And she was confessing, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. 
She got it. She stepped over. I mean, she fell apart. She went in. She lost her mind. I mean, she died with Alzheimer's. The only thing that would get her out is if we went and visited her and we did worship and we sang with worship and we got her out of it. So see, there's, there's these thresholds that the enemy is trying to get us to come into his camp. And God's got thresholds that he's trying to get us into his glory and his freedom and get us out of bondages. So there's all kinds of demonic thresholds that are trying to come. So what we're having is a battle over thresholds. We're not having a battle over the throne. The throne's pretty much set. Devil doesn't have a throne. There's not two kingdoms. There's only one. Not a kingdom of darkness and a kingdom of light. There is no. That's just that's bad doctrine in theology. There's one kingdom and that's it. And if I hear somebody talking about two kingdoms, I just turn them off. I cannot listen to them. No. So, these same things, I'm going to parallel this now, okay? These same things that are thresholds that we have to confront are also the same things that will work for you to move supernaturally. Because crossing the threshold is moving into a supernatural place. So it's not just getting more information or closer to God's presence. It's moving into something supernatural. Number one, in this day, reason has taken the place of faith. Reason has taken the place of faith. That reasoning is why we don't cross thresholds. We reason it away instead of step into it by faith. Hebrews 11.3 says, through faith, not, under, not reasoning, yep. We understand that the worlds were formed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. In other words, God formed it out of nothing. Your mind cannot reason that. Only faith can grab that. So what we have in this hour in the church is Greek mindsets. And we are encouraging people to replace faith with reason and logic. It's logical. It's reasonable. I better not meddle. So here is my statement. If the influence of your education is stronger than your revelation, then it's going to be difficult for you to live by faith. If your education, if the influence of your education is greater or stronger than your revelation, it is going to be extremely hard for you to live by faith. Because your mind and your reasoning will get in the way. And it's the, you can put this into crossing my threshold. I'll never cross my threshold because I'm reasoning it away. Because a threshold cross is by faith. And the same thing, I'll never move in the supernatural because I can reason it all away. You see? So God has called us to do things that are impossible and illogical. Because it's not to our ability, but to his supernatural power flowing through us. So see, it's going to rely upon us stepping into things by faith. Romans 8, 6 says, To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. The carnal mind is an enemy against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither can be. So if you're having trouble experiencing breakthrough in a difficult moment, it might be because you're more logical about it than faith-driven in it. You see, it's requiring faith. And I believe we have been gluttoned out in knowledge in the U.S. We are saturated right now. Zoom this, conference that. I mean, it's like podcast. I mean, it's... I, please do not send me any videos on Facebook. I do not watch one of them. I get about 15 a day. I don't watch any of them. I, 
I don't need to watch them. I need to hear God. You know, I don't watch much television. Even if I'm watching television and the ad starts down, now the new normal, and I just click it. I'm done. I do not need a new normal. That's not my new normal. I'm sorry. So all of these things are trying to stop us from believing. See, tonight we talked a lot about believing, didn't we? Leading up to this moment. So we are allowing, we're allowing this logic to replace our faith. And boy, you can see this in the church in unbelievable. I mean, how we've treated the COVID thing. We treated it logically instead of by faith. So when Daniel, Daniel 6, was thrown in the lion's den, walks away unharmed, I wonder if he was in logic or faith. I wonder when Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego were thrown in a fiery furnace, if they stepped into faith in that moment or if they were in logic. You see, all of these people that we like in the Bible were people of faith. Go back and read Hebrews 11. They were people of faith. And so you'll never cross your threshold or you'll never get into supernatural unless you're in faith. Number two, I got like four of these. Counseling has replaced deliverance. You, you sometimes need deliverance to cross your threshold. Sometimes you need free of your bondage. Sometimes you need free of yourself. Sometimes you need free of your reasoning. All the amount of counseling is not going to free you. You get counseling to help you with life and some things and some direction and get a different perspective and to get, you know, to talk about the adjustments you need to make, and blah, blah, blah. But we do very little deliverance anymore in the church. Because of number one, logic and reasoning leads us to number two, we'll do counseling instead of doing deliverance. In the book of Acts, can you tell me where they were counseling people? <laughs> oh, but you can tell me where they were delivering people. Yeah. And when they delivered people, what happened? It opened up thresholds for people to cross over. I bet that man, when Peter reached down there in Acts 3 and got a little deliverance of his healing, mm -hmm. he got a little free and crossed the threshold into the temple. Because he was not allowed to go in because he was in bondage. I don't believe any kind of counseling was going to free that man. But you see, deliverance freed the guy, and he was free to go in then. So maybe sometimes we need a little deliverance instead of some counseling. Number three, I'll just move on. We'll do deliverance in a little bit. Number three, the extreme grace message has replaced the awe of God. What do I mean by that? Well, if we believe that grace is all I need and I need no fear of God. So if I have grace, I will never cross my threshold if I have that kind of grace thinking. But if I have a healthy fear of God and an awe of God, when I cross that threshold or when I move through that moment of time, I'm going to be captivated by it instead of repulsed by it. But you see, if I know I have to change some stuff, well, I'm under grace. I don't have to change anything. God likes me just as I is. And I is not very good. So what happens when we have an extreme grace mentality then we never step into the supernatural by faith because we can reason it away. But we stop pushing forward and settle for where we are. I don't need to grow. I don't need to mature. I don't need to have God search my heart. I don't need the Holy Spirit's conviction. God and me are fine. There's grace. There's grace. There's grace. There's grace. There's grace. And so we use grace on ourselves instead of an opportunity to access God. 
Grace was never intended to be spent on us. It was, it was intended to be spent to access Him. There's grace in the time of abundance. The time of need. When you have need, access. You see? But we use grace to live our life. I'm in favor. I got promise. I got blessing. I got this. And it's almost like we forget that it's coming from a throne. And it's like we leave him out of the picture and we're taking the benefit of grace instead of allowing grace to access the source. So God's wanting us to... And this stops the supernatural, folks. When we, when we come to the realization that we are pretty much nothing without him... I mean, Josh said that tonight. You know? When we come to that conclusion, then we realize... It is by His grace I can do anything. It's by His grace I'm enabled. I mean, man, without that, I got nothing. I'm coming up empty. Like we were singing. So here's what happens. The cross furnished a complete work, but grace and faith appropriates the work into reality. And if you're not appropriating the work of the cross into reality, then you're burning grace the wrong way. Grace brings it into reality. Makes it real for you. So when you start seeing God with a desire for the awe of God, you will cross your threshold. Not what you can get out of it, but the encounter with him as a person, the encounter with the essence, the DNA, the spiritual makeup of God himself. And so what happens is it's kind of like back to John 4 or back to Revelation 4 with John. It will captivate you. The church needs to be captivated again. That's on the other side of the threshold. The church needs the supernatural. Well, that's on the other side of the threshold. If we keep saying we have it, when we don't have it, God can't give it to us. You see? So we have to take an evaluation and say, mm, we're coming up short. We, we look like Him, but we're denying the power within us to work out of us. So something has to change. And so it'll start to compel you like Moses was compelled to go up the mount, or like David. David was compelled to go into the temple seven times a day to seek God. A compulsion starts coming when you realize that you don't have a, the that grace is just not so abundant as you might think. That sounds kind of strange, doesn't it? Number four, we don't cross our thresholds because we have fear of unknowns. Ooh, I have a fear I might have greater responsibility if I do that. Oh, I have a fear I may fail God if I do that. Oh, I have a fear that I might actually succeed in that. There's people that have a fear of succeeding. Oh, I have a fear that others are going to reject me. Oh, I have a fear of others talking about me. Oh, I have a fear. I have a fear. I have a fear. Here's what happens when you cross your threshold. You confront your fears. You have to confront your fears when you go through your threshold. Hmm. We're not seeing prophecy in the church. We're not seeing healing in the church. We're not seeing signs and wonders in the church. Why are we not seeing it? I'll tell you why. The church is full of fear. There is a fear, an underlying fear of the supernatural in the church, in the body of Christ. We want it. We want to get healed, but we have a fear of the supernatural moving because why? We lose control. God gains control. Hmm, it's a lordship issue. Who's really the Lord? That's what happens when you cross thresholds and deal with your fears. You come under a different lordship. You actually move from your own lordship to his lordship. I said it, I said it at Donnie's thing, at the thing. There's only, two, there's only two fears. I, you know what the two fears are? You, are? you have a natural fear of sound, a loud noise, 
and you have a natural fear of falling, you are born with those two fears. It's the only two fears you have that God gives us. The rest of them are learned behavior. Think of all the fears that we face that we have learned that are not given from God. Isn't that wild? Number five. Now we're to the heart of it. The modern church is satisfied with a substitute than the true supernatural power. With that kind of thinking, we'll not cross our threshold because the threshold is supernatural. It, we're crossing into a supernatural moment and if you're satisfied with all the substitutes and all the hype and all the charisma and all of this and all of that, and there's not measurable results. It's what I loved about something Peter Wagner said once in a meeting. He said, we must have measurable results of reformation and awakening. We should be able to have measurable, measurable results, not speculation, or evangelistically speaking. We should be able to say, we prayed, this happened. Like tonight, we should be able to pray, believe for Ray, we should get a report. You see, it should not be that, you know, like Josh said. It shouldn't be that way. There has to be measurable results. So how do we get the supernatural in that threshold? Here, I'll just give you a bunch of stuff, because this is the heart of where I wanted to go. And Acts 4.23 was a threshold moment. The early church comes back. They come to their own company. They pray for boldness to come. And they pray for signs and wonders and healing. They are, they're like praying in the threshold moment. God, turn it up. Turn us up. Turn us up to wide open. Turn us up into what? Supernatural. Turn us up into the power. Turn us up into what's authentic. Turn us into that place. And so that threshold moment, it brought boldness, it brought healing, it brought a new infilling of the Spirit, it brought a great power, and it brought a greater grace. And it went on all of them, not a handful, on all of them. The early church suffered persecution because they had supernatural power. Don't be worried about persecution until you get power flowing. Then when power is flowing, you won't worry about persecution. You see? What did they do? Like they did in Acts 4. They prayed. They were constantly in the attitude of prayer. They were constantly in the place of seeking for signs and wonders and miracles. They were constantly flowing with God as one. They were constantly releasing the power of God into situations and other places. So they crossed into a, a supernatural state of being. It became a lifestyle. There is a threshold the church is coming into that we will step over. A remnant's going to step into a supernatural lifestyle. It will make everybody desirous of those that stepped to follow like the early church. They're going to want that supernatural lifestyle. They're not going to want a supernatural touch. They're going to want a lifestyle of it. It is going to be like an infectious disease. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. They're all, everybody's going to want it. You see, the time of us trying to be convincing has got to come to an end, and the time of us demonstrating has to begin. We have to come into the next thing that God has for the church in America, especially. Man, we're in a, I don't get into that, but we're in a situation. So what does a supernatural lifestyle look like? I'll just give you three or four examples. Acts 5, 19. The angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth. I'm not talking about healings. I'm talking about invading the natural realm. Because see, supernatural means beyond the natural. It's, it superimposes its will upon the natural realm. And so the natural realm says, 
The door is locked. You can't get out. And God's like, mm, no. I can, I can break. I can have a prison break. I can get you out of that situation. I'll just send an angel down there. He'll open the door for me. It's not hard. We're making things way too hard because of number one. Reasoning, not faith. Since the angel opens the door. Acts 8, 39. And when they come out of the water, Philip's baptizing. The Holy Spirit caught him away. And the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found in Azotus. I think it's 29 miles. He got translated like that. We think, oh my God, that's an intense thing. No, that's a lifestyle. Well, that didn't excite anybody. That's a lifestyle of being translated to another location. Amen. I mean, that, isn't that like... You might See, you're, you went into reasoning all of a sudden. I could feel it in the room. We went into number one reasoning. Well, that can't happen. That can't happen to me. That only happens to special people that God really loves. People full of faith. The one that I love is Acts 12. It's full. It's all full. Peter's in jail. The church is praying without ceasing. A supernatural lifestyle full of faith, believing for somebody to step in, somehow God to step in. And here comes the angel, smotes Peter, punches him out, says, wake up, dude, got to leave, doors are open, gates are open to a city, come on, let's go. And out he goes, and he goes to the place where they're praying. Remember, I talked talk about this last week, it maybe recently, maybe I talked, I talked about it in prayer, in the prayer room. He knew where they were praying. He, he knew Peter is not concerned. Jesus said, you will live a long life, Peter. You will suffer many things, like Paul. Peter cuts the dude's ear off in the garden, remember? Jesus heals the guy's ear. Why? So there's no evidence that Peter cut the dude's ear off. Why? Because he attacked a Roman soldier. Death. But Jesus said, I got a plan for you, Peter. And it's not premature death. You're not dying here because you were, in your anger, cut the dude's ear off. I'm going to heal the ear so we can save your, save your destiny on the earth. Now here we go. i got things for you to do. By the way, you're going to live a long old age. And you're going to die an old man. And you're going to see a lot of stuff. So Peter's sitting there in jail. He's like, ooh, ooh I'm sleeping. I don't have any worries. Because this is not my final destination. God will take care of me. You see, you see the lifestyle they were living? You see the mentality that they had? It was like, God has got this. So I put it like this. Thresholds are spiritual experiences that cause supernatural results. They literally cause things in the natural realm to shift and take notice because somebody crossed a threshold. Yeah. Yeah. Peter crossed that threshold in faith. Others crossed thresholds. You know, we talked all about it. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, We walk by faith, faith not by sight. <laughs> Do you realize that you are the only entity legal to operate in God's supernatural power? Something to think about. Now, why do we have so much trouble with all this? Why do we have trouble accepting it? I go back to the, I literally go back to the book I wrote, that we don't understand our righteousness, we don't understand our sonship, we don't understand our authority, mm -hmm. we aren't walking in holiness, we don't have a, a, an eternal mindset. But here's what we do in America. We try everything but God. And then we try God. We run our course. Reasoning. I can get it this way. I'm not desperate enough. I'm not in the awe of God. All this. And then finally when it all fails. 
or we get a little relief, well, maybe God will step in. But really what it comes to is this. We have a hard time accepting there's something beyond what we've experienced. I've experienced this, and I have a hard time believing by faith that there's more. And I start to limit, and I put the cap on. And you know what I'm doing? I start literally building a door across my threshold that I have to tear that wall down to go on into that place. So I come back to this, that there are three things affecting us. I'm not going to elaborate, but you all know what they are. Spirit of Antichrist. Everything is coming in place of Christ. Anti. Culture. Culture is influencing us in our decision making. And the last one, a Greek mindset that we carry ourselves. We literally carry this reasoning, this deductive thing. Oh, I don't even want to ask how many have analytical minds. I might get discouraged. <laughs> Probably half the room has analytical minds. I have an analytical mind. It's like use the analytical mind to study in God, not to dissect your faith. <laughs> don't diffuse yourself. So we have to do some things. I'll give you, I'll give you another little list. Are these things helping? Yes. I'm almost done. I'm just the same as there. So things that you have to do to cross your threshold. Number one, realize God is supernatural. He's supernatural. He'll get you across. He'll, he'll, he'll remove whatever. He'll get you there. Number two, Renounce these influences that are influencing you. Which is what, you know, you would call number three, repentance. Repentance is always good for all things. <laughs> and we need to have a repentive lifestyle. But have a repentive thing for substituting supernatural things. We love, we love good teaching, we love good worship, but then it's like we kind of just fall off the cliff when it comes to supernatural things. Number four, acknowledge your need. Number five, commit to walk. Commit to walk over your threshold. Commit to walk into supernatural things. I'll leave you with a couple things here. Isaiah 43, 19 Behold, I do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I'll tell you the Hebrew thinking. True knowledge comes through experience, not by attaining knowledge. The Hebrews believe that the only way that you actually got knowledge was by experience. And they believed that knowledge is revelation knowledge, not just study knowledge. So it was re the revealing of the hiddenness of God, meaning it was beyond reasoning and had to be accepted by faith. And so their conclusion was, was that experience brought by revelation was a supernatural experience, not natural. So it's like God is wanting us to get revelation that creates the supernatural out of our lives. Amen. And, you know, the thing, you know, I'm, I'm very, I'm a very, how should I put this? I'm a very studied person. I won't say I'm well read. I read a lot. But I'm not well, what I would call well-read, like some people I know are well-read. And I'm finding the people that are well-read have lost their faith. Because I, I was reading a guy's post today. Man, you look smart. You look well-read. And you have like zero faith. And you used to be full of faith. And I'm finding like, it's almost like 
if you're not careful, if you're not pursuing the revealing of the Holy Spirit, that supernatural moment, you will become well-read and you will lose your faith and everything you believe will be based on your reasoning and not based on your spirit knowing. You have got to get your spirit knowing. I see this as a problem in the kingdom camp. I see it as a problem because everybody's trying to bring the latest nugget, the latest deal, the blah, 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 to try to get a following. And I, what I'm seeing is we are becoming educated fools. I did say that on the internet. There'll be people that will listen to this. About 300 that listen. It's like we are, we, are, we are becoming consumed in knowledge and not consumed in the experience of a supernatural moment with God. And so we, you, have you noticed a pattern in the last two, three weeks in the meetings we have a moment of super supercharged something happening in the meeting for about 20 minutes. Tonight it was a thing with Ray and releasing that sound. We're ha that's starting to come. What's happening? It's like we're stepping out of reasoning and into a moment of faith where there's something starting to move. That has to become our norm. It has to become the lifestyle. It has to become every time we gather here, we're coming in faith believing not reasoning, faith believing, and just move into the opportunity that's setting here and start to see where God wants to take it. You know, people said, you know, I think it was Stuart said that he believed for that word last week. People believe for whatever that was in that moment. You know, in that moment, I got, you know, so it's like you just got to step in, folks. See what I'm saying? You just got to step in. Well, there you go. So there you are tonight, part two. Question? Yes, sir. I'm going to grab a mic. All righty. Yeah, we can have Q&A. I don't care. So you gave a couple of examples of people that um, stepped over the incorrect threshold. I believe that when, when you were talking about that, I believe that they were supposed to be used by God supernaturally in the opposite realm. Right. So, for example, the lady who had illness, sickness and illness, because that's what she dwelt on, she was actually meant to step across the threshold to be used by God to bring healing to others. Is Abs that right? I would absolutely say that. She was a very strong prophetic singer. Very strong, could reveal things. Very strong and had seen a lot in her life of healing and miracles and all of that. Grew up in that realm. But because of what her mom experienced, she took on that trauma. You see, no matter, it's like she needed deliverance, but didn't see the need that she needed deliverance. You know? It's like that woman that I said was always something getting worse. You know, when you see her, then it was, she'd give you a list of 40 things. You know what? She died of all of them. She, was, she literally died of every single thing that she had confessed over her life. She stepped over a threshold that she couldn't even come back out of. I think, you know, and I know God can deliver, and that's where it's back to, are we going to counsel that person or are we going to deliver that person? You know, when we first started the ministry, we were doing deliverance almost every day on somebody. You know, today we don't see a need because, number one, we reason back instead of by faith. So we just reason away. I don't need deliverance. I go get counseling. I can go get this. I can go get that. We didn't mess around. We just did deliverance. It didn't take long either. Counseling just sucked you dry forever and ever. We just did deliverance on people. And then it was, they were free. You know, now, sometimes they have to reprocess how they're thinking. That's where counseling comes in. But where's the stronghold that's broken off the person so they can be free? Now they can get the counseling and it has an effect. It brings the change that's needed. But yeah, I think that there's the, the enemy has thresholds too. He wants to try to get you across. Um, you know, it's like people being offended. There's a, there's a threshold. You reach an offense and it builds so big, you cross a threshold and your heart becomes hardened and bitter. And now you have unforgiveness settled in your heart and it literally becomes like a cancer eating at you. 
And now you're in, you're in that threshold, and you know what? You can repent and cross back over that threshold. You may need deliverance to get out of it because you're, of the bitterness of your heart. So, I mean, you, you think about we're supposed to be supernatural people, so you can almost, I could almost make this statement. If it isn't supernatural, then we probably should not be doing it. That needs to settle in, doesn't it? If it is supernatural, we ought to be doing it. That's a, that's a huge paradigm from one end to the other. Mr. John's got something back here. Just the activation and just, you know, practicing, 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 yeah. practicing, doing, 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 till it becomes your lifestyle. The, yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Anything else tonight? Then we're going to do activation then. Who has a need tonight? Anybody have a need? Did it all get met as we went down the journey tonight? I'll get met. Well, we're still do activation. Too bad. So everybody stand up. We're going to do two waves of activation. Wave number one. Everyone look around. Do you see someone the Holy Spirit is highlighting to you? Look with spiritual eyes. Don't look with the natural eyes. We're all peculiar people. We all know that. You see someone the Holy Spirit is highlighting to you, then go to that person. That's wave one. We're going to take care of all of this first, see? We're we'll going to let the Holy Spirit do what he wants to do first. Just listen, just look. Is God speaking? If God's speaking, then go. Just take a moment and just zone in a little. Okay, wave two then. Everybody go to somebody that you possibly don't know. I know we all kind of know each other. But the least that you know the person, the better off you'll be. So go to somebody that you possibly don't know very much about. Yeah, we got, we got back here. We got Nina. And right there, we got is the sound booth covered. And then just pray. Pray, speak, prophesy. Stir yourself up. Activate. Supernatural. Supernatural. Pray. Prophesy. Activate. Pray for healing. Pray for needs. Father, tonight we pray for everybody on the stream. God, we pray that they would be ministered to in this moment by you, Holy Spirit, and lead them into a supernatural encounter with you. Father, I pray tonight that you would do a work in the hearts of your people, that they would cross every threshold and opposition that's in front of them, that they'd be delivered from the thresholds that they shouldn't have crossed and be brought into thresholds that God has ordained. Father, I pray that you would do a work in your church to make your church supernatural once again. And Father, I bless your people tonight, and I bless those on the stream. In Jesus' name, amen.